Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am making a video that I hope will help a lot of incoming freshmen or people who are just interested in maybe changing their major. Um, but it, this video is going to be kind of geared towards Oregon State students. Um, I'm not too sure about other schools and their systems of computer science, so that's why I can't really speak on those programs. But if you are considering coming to Oregon State, I feel like this video is so important because for myself, I feel like I did not get educated on this topic and I pursued a degree that maybe I could have done differently. I don't regret it because I do love what I'm doing and I love my classes, I love the people I've met, and I feel that I have gained so many experiences that I would have otherwise missed out on, but I would have liked to be a little bit more educated on maybe what I missed out on or how things could have been differently in my college experience. So today I'm going to be talking about computer science systems versus applied. And if you don't know what that means, that's okay. I'm going to explain it right now. Oregon State has two different routes you can take if you decide to come and major in computer science. So there's the applied route, which means you have a focus in something. And there's the systems route, which is what I'm doing. And it's more of a general, broad, you learn different topics, um, you learn hardware, you learn more math and science, so you're just kind of, you're more well-rounded in kind of the math and science, computer science, electrical engineering area. Whereas with applied, you would have an applied focus, so you could do business and entrepreneurship, you could do cybersecurity. So when I'm taking physics with calculus, you could be taking an AI class because you're getting an AI focused degree. So there's pros and cons to both. I'm going to also show you on the Oregon State um, website how you can navigate to certain links and special things that you should look out for. So as I did say before, I am systems, so I will be talking solely on my experience and what I've heard from other people for the applied route. And also when I'm talking about systems, it's my own personal opinion. Everyone is different and I'm not here to tell you what you should change your major to or um, I'm not here to be like, you should take this. I'm here to kind of guide you and give you a little bit more information because when you first come to Oregon State, I don't know where I was when they explained the difference between the two, but I never learned the difference but, um, until after I finished the Physics with Calculus series at my end of my sophomore year. And then I learned there's a difference. And I know that sounds crazy and I don't know where I was living under a rock or something, but if I can help one person figure out maybe that they want to have a focus in something, um, or maybe they don't and that's cool too. So yeah, take everything what I'm saying with a grain of salt and your degree is your decision at the end of the day, but I hope I can provide a little bit more information. Okay, so I'm first going to talk about the systems option. So if you're on the website, you can see they have the applied option and systems option. Under them, they both have degree requirements. And if you, if you click on them under the um, required courses, they're almost the same for the applied and systems. But the differences start to happen when you get down to CS261 and 71 on the applied route. Um, and that's where things start to change for the systems. So you can see that uh, for systems, you take more ECE and more math um, and physics with calculus. And additional major requirements, basically what that is is saying you also have to take all of these. Those can be taken at like a later time since they are higher level classes. And the basic difference here is that when applied students start to take computer architecture design, the computer science version of that, you don't take that, but instead you start taking a series of ECE classes, which ECE is electrical computer engineering, um, so more hardware based classes. So you take digital logic and design, um, you take the lab for that, and then like right now I'm in ECE 375, or at least I was, um, and that's the computer architecture, same class as that 271 but it's an ECE version. So they are different and your classes are not gonna be the same as your peers who are in applied. Um, but I believe that taking the higher level math and the physics with calculus as much as I hated those classes while I was taking them, 
um, looking back on it, I am so grateful that I did and that I learned those skills because I feel like I'm gaining experiences that my peers are maybe lacking in certain areas, but at the same time, they're also learning skills that I'm lacking. Um, but I just feel like I like knowing about hardware now. Okay, so next I will be talking about the applied option. And if you go back to the website, you can see that there are like eight different um, pre-planned applied options. You can also build your own. That's something that a lot of people don't know. So the different applied options are cybersecurity, data science, artificial intelligence, robot intelligence, bioinformatics, business and entrepreneurship, human computer interaction, simulation and game programming, web and mobile application development. So I would say the most common one is the business and entrepreneurship route. Um, I just know the most people who are doing that, but also AI is a big thing. The other ones, like people are in them, I'm just not really familiar with people who are pursuing them. Basically what you do when you get an applied major is when I'm taking my physics with calculus, you're taking something that's more specific to your, you know, route. So if you're in business entrepreneurship, you're going to take business marketing, uh, business law, all these other classes that I'm not going to take when I'm taking something you're not taking. Does that kind of make sense? So, and okay, so I've been looking at the different requirements for the different applied options and some of these do go up to a much higher math than I thought. So yeah, wow. Okay, so there are things, so like if you take AI, you would take so if you are going to do applied, you're going to have a different core and elective area. So I'm looking at the AI one right now and I didn't realize they actually do go up to a pretty high math. So you still have to take vector calculus, but you would take machine learning and data mining. And that is something that I don't have to take. So if you want to explore all these, I'll have the links for them down below um, where you can find all this. But basically what you would do is you would click on the specific major that you want to pursue and you can look at the differences and similarities so if you are going to do the applied route just know you are not limited to doing that in the rest of your life so i know someone who majored in the video game design but now she's like working for the government and writing code and doing all this crazy stuff that's not video game design So Oregon State makes pre-designed plans for you and I will put them on the screen, but basically it's like these bubbles that tell you, okay, this is what your track should look like from freshman year to senior year. These are all the classes you're gonna have to take and this is the order you should take them in. Okay, so now I'm on the example plans. You can see here that I'm at the applied option and something I wanna show you is that basically your freshman and sophomore year are pretty much the same as someone who is in the systems option. So um, you can see that you take the same like CS 161 classes and you take data structures. The only difference is that when we start to take math here for the systems majors, um, you would take your stats and your writing and you would just get all your back core done a little bit faster than us. Um, and you can see that for an applied major in the third and fourth year, they have these approved applied electives. So like I said, if you're taking business, maybe your business marketing class would be right here. And then if you are in the systems option, uh, this is, you know, where we have our ECE classes and where we kind of get caught up with the rest of our back core. And I know that sounds confusing, but as you can see here, I'm back in the systems um, required courses. And at the bottom, you can see that the total hours is closer to like 80. Whereas the applied route is actually only 50 hours, but like I said and explained earlier, that's because we branch off and do different things. It is really important to start thinking about what you're going to take and how you're going to take them in order, maybe plan accordingly, say, okay, well, if I, this is a spring only class, maybe I'm not going to take that senior year because what if I fail and then I can't graduate in the spring. So maybe take it your junior year, you don't want to just be signing up for classes one day and then be like, oh, great, this class is not offered and it's a prereq for another class and now I can't take it and everything is thrown off. So write down 
all the classes, write down when they're offered, and try and get a good plan going, and then present it to someone like your advisor. Um, and they can tell you what looks like a heavy course load, what you should do, what you could add on, and all of that. So I feel like people get really scared from systems because they see all the math and all the ECE and they're like, I don't even know what that is. But trust me, it's not that bad. And if there's one thing you should take from this video, it is that nothing good worth having comes easy. You should not be in a major that you're like, oh, I'm getting the degree because it's easy. Challenge yourself and you might find things, new things that you like or enjoy. Like I said, I'm kind of exploring a bit more of hardware on my own time now. So don't think that systems is the hard route and that applied will be your easy way out to getting a CS degree. You're gonna have to do work in both options. But in my opinion, if you do systems, just be prepared to do a lot of work, like a lot. I'm not kidding you how many hours I spend um, on these like higher level classes that I'm talking to you about and I'm not trying to scare you, but I will say it is a lot of work, but like I said, it's very rewarding. Um, and that's not to say that the applied route that you don't have to put in a lot of work. There are classes in the applied route that take the same amount of time um, and effort. So yeah. You can always switch back and forth between the two. I have a friend who literally just switched her junior year, like the end of her junior year. So you can switch at any time. It just depends on what you're switching to and what credits you want to lose and what you're comfortable with. Um, so yeah. From my experience is at conferences and trying to get a job and an internship, stuff like that. People are more like, it depends on what you're, it depends on what job you're applying for. Like obviously if I was applying for an AI job, like someone who's in the AI applied route is more qualified than myself. But um, for general software engineering internships, they don't care if you're systems or applied. Like they just want someone who can code and most people don't even know the difference if they are not familiar with Oregon State and our system. Um, so don't worry if you're like, oh my gosh, if I do applied route, someone in systems is gonna get the software engineering internship over me. That's not true. Um, it's, you know, all about your skills and we all learn the same basic skills. And it's just once you get to that second year and you kind of split off and do your own thing, whereas applied will continue with their focus and systems will just start doing all the math and physics and ECE and all of that. So yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about AP testing in high school and how that would play into your degree at Oregon State. I did get a question about this on Instagram and I thought it might help other people too to address it in this video. But basically when I was in high school, senior year, I took AP Computer Science and my class was in Java. And when it came to the AP test, I was just too scared to take it. And I think I had a bit of imposter syndrome where I was like, oh, I'm not actually like doing all this work. Like, I don't think I'm smart enough. I don't think I can pass this test. But if you wanna take the AP test, I say go for it because you'll never know if you don't try. I will say the AP test, I believe replaces CS160. So you can ask anyone, but the CS160 series is like the hardest because it's to weed people out who are not really driven for programming. And I feel like if you are gonna take the AP test, and you do pass and you want to skip a credit that's great but at the same time I feel like without CS160 I would have been lost and I actually know someone really close to me who did the AP test and then we were both in 161 together and he was like whoa like what's going on because you go from high school Java into college C++ and it it's not to scare you, um, but it is kind of a big jump. And I feel like 161 is that perfect little stepping stone from going from high school programming to college programming. And you can learn like how the Oregon State teachers do it, what they're looking for, what a lab looks like, um, what a typical assignment is gonna be so that when you're in 161 and people who are already taking 160, they're gonna be like cruising by, they're gonna be like, oh, I know how to do a peer review, I know how to do this, and you might be lost. So. I feel like if you can afford to take 160, maybe if you have a um, scholarship or if taking that one class will not be too much of a burden on you, I would definitely say take the 160 class, even if you do the AP exam or if you did the AP class, like I'm a perfect example of this, I did the AP class, 
and I also did the 160 class. I may have not taken the test, but I think even if I would have taken the test, I probably would have wanted to do the 160 series in order of 160, 161, and 162. Okay, that is it for this video, everyone. I hope I was able to help somebody somewhere kind of figure out and be a little bit more informed about the two different options here at Oregon State. Like I said, I don't feel like I was educated very well on it when I came here, so that's why I wanted to make this video. If you have any more questions or comments, definitely DM me on Instagram or comment here. Everything will be down below. All the links to the example plans, the Oregon State website, and the different options, everything will be down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.